people who, who you know who, who were you know believers they started with God very well but they are backslided for the enemy led them somewhere and they thought they were going to bring some people in but the devil used the people to bring them from the enemy so you got to be anointed and appointed come on prophet come on prophet to go to certain places hallelujah if God has not yet given you the gift wait on God yeah. Wait for the gift to come. Yeah. It's better for you to wait so that God can fill you up. Christian nowadays don't know. You don't want to wait. Some of you rush too much. What are you rushing for? Come on, man. Hallelujah. How many of you know the story of Elijah? Uh-huh. And the servant was named Elisha. Hallelujah. You see, Elisha served under Elijah. Come on. Uh-huh. He waited. And the Bible says before Elijah would was taken up into heaven. Elijah poured water on the hands of Elisha. Yeah. Hallelujah, somebody. And Elisha waited. So when the man of God went up, he casted the mantle. Yes. And the mantle fell upon the servant Elisha. Yes, it is. It's all about waiting. Now, Elisha, during his time, had a servant. His name was Gehazi. Yes. Gehazi was rushing. Gehazi was greedy. Gehazi could not wait. Now the Bible says a double portion came on Elisha. Which means if Gehazi would have served Elisha well, El- uh, Gehazi would have yeah. get a triple portion. Yeah. Oh, wow. But because he could not wait, he missed the first portion, the second portion, and the third portion. Uh-huh. And not only that, he inherited the sickness of Neymar. Leprosy. If you can't wait on God, leprosy will come on your life. You poison every area of your life. This man could not wait on God. And instead of him to wait on God, he began to blame God for their situation. He began to say, well, it looks as if God has already handed us over to our enemies. But the Bible says that one of the king, the king of Judah, whose name was Jehoshaphat, said, wait a minute. Why should we curse God? Why should we blame God? Is there not a prophet uh-huh. in this land who hears and sees the glory of God? Yeah. And the Bible says that he searched, and lo and behold, he found Elisha, who served under Elijah. When Elisha came, Elisha did not even want to help them because of the king of Israel. Because Elisha knew that the king of Israel had a negative mind, a negative heart. And Elijah said, if it had not been for the king of Judah, whom I so respect, I will not even speak a word yeah, right. to you. And because of that, the Bible said that the man of God said, dig in these ditches, yeah. and water will surely come forth for you and your army. Yeah, yeah. I explained to you guys yesterday that whenever you are digging, and you get tired, don't stop digging. The word dig means you gotta keep pushing. There is a word that says push or pray until something what happens. If you pray today and nothing happens, that doesn't mean God is not hearing you. All right. If you pray tomorrow and nothing happens, that doesn't mean God is not hearing you. Yeah. The more you push, you are pushing to a place of blessing. You see, when a woman is pregnant, what does the woman do on the ninth month? She must push. Some of you, you are pregnant. Come on, brother. Oh, is somebody hearing me tonight? Yeah. Listen to me very carefully. Do you know why things were good before, but now things are so bad? Do you know why you were very comfortable before, but now you are uncomfortable? What happens when a woman is not pregnant? She walks so nice and beautiful. <laughs> she wears nice skinny dresses. But when the woman begins to get pregnant, the first man, the second man, the third man, now things begin to change. She doesn't walk all, oh, you need to walk like this. The framework. Because she's going through a process. She begins to walk, and, and the clothes that she wears doesn't fit her anymore. She has to now go to the store and get clothes for pregnant women. Is somebody hearing me? So now, that woman has grown out of some things. Sometimes in life, you grow into some things and you grow out of some things. 
The same clothes you wore when you were five years old, you don't wear those clothes anymore. Is somebody hear me? You have grown out of the clothes you wear when you were five years old. Is somebody hear me? The shoe you used to wear when you were 20 years old, you have grown out of that. So the size change, the appearance change, is the same way when you are pregnant in the spirit. Are you experiencing hardship in your life? Does it look as if the atmosphere around you is changing? It is a new season. You are probably on the ninth month in the realms of the spirits. You got to keep pushing. Don't give up. The Bible says the expectation of the righteous. Now let us analyze that word expectation. When a woman is pregnant, somebody will say that she's expecting. When the time comes for the baby to get ready to come. Oh, so so and so is expecting. Somebody, you are expecting a miracle. Your expectation, the Lord said, it will not be cut off. It will surely come to pass in your life. The king of Judah, the king of Israel, and the king of Edom were expecting. They needed water. They needed life. There is a blessing in you. The Bible says, as soon as, as soon as Zion travails, she will bring forth a man child. What is a man child? The man child stands for your blessing, your destiny. The things you've been going through in pain. When a woman is pregnant, it's so much pain. She begins to spit. She feels uncomfortable. Amen. She begins to get go, go to the hospital for checkups. Her body is not functioning well anymore. Because there is something in her that is big. There is a big blessing in you. Spiritually. What God is about to birth out of your spirit is greater. Is somebody hear me? The Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. There is something big in you. Your destiny is bigger than you think. Hmm? Is somebody hear me? Nobody knows the future. Listen to me very carefully. Huh? There are people who have made it to certain places who never knew that they would make it there. I know that this is the city where Barack Obama is from or, or where you know, he served. Now, I believe 10 years ago, or let's say, you know, uh, 15 years ago, he never dreamed he would become a president one day. That's right. He never even dreamed or thought about it. The people around him never thought about it. People never looked and said, oh, this is the next president. No. But who is he now? You don't know who you are going to become. Yes. You don't know the destiny that God has put on you. There is a great anointing, a great glory on your life. Maybe you are the one who holds the key to your family. Maybe you are the one that is going to be greater in the family. That explains why your pains are so much. That explains why you are going through so much in your life. I want to encourage you. Don't give up. What will happen? If a woman goes to the hospital and she doesn't want to push, I don't want to push, I'm tired. Now, she put all the stress on the doctors. The doctors got to figure out how they're going to get that baby out. <laughs> Somebody help <here. laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You cannot give up. Let me tell you something. If you don't push, you see, in the physical realm, if you don't push, the doctors will do something they call what? C-section. And you, they will bring the baby out. But in the spiritual realm, there is no C-section. If somebody hear me. And if you don't push in the spiritual realm, the devil will do your a C-section and take your blessing. And when he take your baby, it's not going to be like the physical realm where they, they're going to give your baby to you when they do the C-section. No. In the spiritual realm, demons will come and do a C-section. If you are lazy, the devil will come and take your miracle from you. Because after all, his eye is on you. The devil sees that you are pregnant in the spirit. He sees you are, you are expecting a blessing. If you don't know, he sees it. That is why he's hitting you so much. He's trying to cut you about your blessing. He's doing everything that he got to do to make sure you don't bring forth that blessing. Mary was pregnant, and when Mary was 
about to give birth. So many enemies heard about it. Herod said, I heard that somebody, a, a, a king is about to come on this earth. And the devil entered into Herod. And Herod gave a command for a thousand and so soldiers to go out there to search for the baby that had been born. And they said, kill every male child until you find that baby. The devil sees what God is about to birth in you. So he's attacking you. He wants to kill you. But the Lord has sent me here to tell you, before I leave back to Orlando, that you've been pushing. You are pregnant. You've gone through the experiences. And you are almost there. If God has allowed you to see this new year, if God has allowed you for you to open your eye every morning to see the beautiful sun shining. Yeah. It's because God himself is also waiting with you to the day you will bring forth your miracle. God has set a day and marked a day on his calendar. The day that you will bring forth your blessing. Is somebody hearing me? Everybody here, there is a day. The same way God set a date when your mommy was pregnant. For, you, for, your mother, your, for your mother to bring you forth on that date, which is now your birth date, is the same date God has for your miracle. Yeah. Your blessing. Yeah. It's the same way God is going to bring forth something miraculous in your life. Yes, Lord. So there is a spiritual warfare. The devil is fighting against you. And God is watching you. What are you going to do? God said, I've given you everything that you need. Some of you say, well, well, prophet, then why don't God just come and help me out and just, you know. God has done everything that he got to do for you. He sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die for you, to die a disgraceful death. When he spat on him, walked around the street of Jerusalem naked. Do you know Jesus walked naked? Totally naked. What you see on TV is not, it's not even everything. He was naked because those days they naked you from your head to your toe. Then they nail you on the cross, spit on him. He went through a lot. He despised the shame because of you. And after that, not only that, God gave you his blood. That you can use that blood whenever you want. To wipe away your sins, to fight against the devil. God gave you the sword of the spirits. God has given you salvation, healing. Everything is at your reach. Why are you not grabbing hold of it and using it? Come on, come on. What else do you want God to do for you? Hmm? That explains why God is just watching. It's not that God doesn't want to do anything. He said, I have given you everything that you need. There was a story of a man who was uh, about to be swallowed by a, a flood. There was a big flood. And then while you know he was in the boat, and then a ship came by, and the ship people, they were telling, hey, come, come on board, let, let us help you. He said, no, I'm waiting on God. <laughs> Somebody else came with one of those uh, check boats, the one that they pull like this, and the person said, hey, come on, buddy, let's go, let's go, you're going to die, and the water is rising. He said, no, I'm waiting on God. <laughs> and a lot of people came to try to help the guy. The guy said, no, the Lord said I should just wait, I'm waiting on him. Yeah. So now, the guy died. And when he died, he went to heaven. He said, God, he said, Jesus, why did you come help me? He just said, but I sent the boats. I sent the ship. I sent everything. But you said you were waiting on me. Some of you think that you're waiting on God, not knowing God is rather waiting on you. Yes, yes, yes. Some say you are waiting on God. When you ask a woman, why are you not married? Oh, I'm waiting on God. You're not careful, you're going to sit there until you are 80 years old. <laughs> then you're not getting man. I'm serious. That's right. Hallelujah. You got to, you know, have faith in God. Believe in God. Go out there. Pray. And God will bring you your boas. That's right. Don't just sit there and fold your arms and say you are waiting on God. Are you hearing me, somebody? Yes. God is waiting on you to take a step of faith. When Jesus was walking on water, and Peter saw Jesus, and Peter said, Jesus, is that you? Jesus said, yes, 